UK's recovery. So tell us that the uh, job situation is rather better than we might have expected, you know, six months ago. I think they, they mask a bit of a picture because it's only the headline figure that gets reported. Uh, but what is underlying that is that long-term unemployment is actually going up. So, you know, you're looking at people unemployed either between six to 12 months or indeed over one year. So that's a bit concerning. There's a lot that can still go wrong, isn't there? Well, there is a lot that can still go wrong because, of course, we haven't yet got the job retention scheme finished. So we don't quite know what's going to happen at the end of that because it's only now, i.e. yesterday, that a lot of things are gradually opening up. So, you know, indoor dining, etc., wasn't allowed until Monday. So really, it's going to be a, a bit further down the line before we can say accurately what is going to happen. I mean, the demand for reopening the economy, that creates new jobs. And I'm thinking of Amazon and saying, right, they're going to have 10,000 new hires in the UK. Filling those roles, though, that's an entirely different story, isn't it? Well, there's, there's two issues here, I think. I mean, the one is, in terms of filling the vacancies, a lot is going to depend on what they pay. Because if you offer a high enough wage, you will attract workers. And I think the other thing that might be relevant for them if you actually look at the figures that have been released today, uh, economic inactivity rates, i.e. people that are not actually in the labour market, that's gone up. And when you look behind the figures, it's 16 to 17-year-olds. So what we've seen is that people who would normally have left school last summer stayed on at school because there, there weren't any job openings. So it might be that in this summer, you've almost got a sort of double load of uh, school leaving cohorts entering the labour market at the same time. So what you're saying there, there's going to be a double whammy. That's that extra school cohort plus the end of the jobs retention scheme furlough. Um, maybe it's going to be yeah. later in the year that or maybe all of that is being disguised for now. I think it is going to be later in the year. We're not going to know the full impact until the job retention scheme finishes. I mean, that that's for certain. So I think it's, it, it's going to be towards the end of the year before we see the, the full impact. I mean, we don't even know whether everything is going to reopen. I mean, even some outlets that were allowed to open yesterday didn't. So it's not, you know, we're not quite out of the, the woods yet. There is still some way to go. So what next for policymakers? I'm thinking maybe the conversation is going to shift now towards what the Bank of England is going to do. I think where policymakers are going to be looking at is that, you know, the Bank of England has now got some very rosy forecasts for UK growth, possibly in the realms of 7.5%, which is very, very high. I think what they will be looking to then, particularly as lockdown eases, we know that households have got a lot of accumulated savings and also firms have had frustrated investment plans. I think what policymakers are going to be looking at is what happens to investment.